surrounded by wrestling fans. Not, not sports entertainment fans. Professional wrestling fans. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. This is the Wrestling Man's Podcast. A podcast that stands up for professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters. So join the revolution. Because the revolution is now. Well, enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. Yes. 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 Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line. Cause Stone Cold sucks up. Yeah, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is me, me, that H E A D, back with you for the 101 episode of the Wrestling Matters podcast. How are we all doing? Hope you're well. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the wrestling this week in whatever it is form of professional wrestling you have watched and enjoyed this week. Today's show, we're going to talk raw as well a smackdown nxt and tna why not we'll probably throw in icw in there as well uh it's a championship wrestling and um, look back on the two episodes of the friday night fight club that we uh didn't that i didn't uh, review so i'll get them in today as well and why not we'll we'll have another crack at ring of honor again check in on ring of honor and see what's going on in the ring of honor so uh like I say, I hope you guys are well. Um, I've been recovering from a cough this week. Uh, that's why I was going to do an ICW live stream on my YouTube channel uh, for the Wrestling Matters channel. Uh, but uh, I, I, I'm sick of going on stream. I, I go on stream on my other one, on my other channels as well. And all I did was cough. So I thought, I'll make sure I get rid of this cough first before I start streaming again. So I've been busting out videos on the games channel. And I've been busting out videos as best I can on the YouTube channel, on the Wrestling Matters channel as well, which has now got over 200 views. Uh, 200 subscribers, rather. Sorry, views. Uh, so I appreciate that as well. Uh, before we kick off with our regular routine here on the Wrestling Matters channel, uh, on, the, on the Wrestling Matters podcast rather, here on the Wrestling Matters channel, Swift Talk Network and SoundCloud, and soon to be the Wix website as well, more on that in a second, uh, I have some promotions that I need to do, some uh, some pay my bills routine, if you will, even though I'm not paying my bills, but like I said, I've got some things I need to talk about first before we get into the show. Uh, more Mystery Island, uh, be sure to check them out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash back to the island, that Mystery Island on f- Twitter, I believe it is, either one, it's either one of them, uh, be sure to check them out as well. If you're in the Birkenhead area, get yourself over there, all the links to them will be in the description below, I'll put them in the description below, whether you're listening to this on YouTube, Swift Hunt Network, or the SoundCloud as well. Uh, Chris Masters is going there at the end of the month, March 26th. So be sure to be sure to check him out. Um, if you're in that area as well, if you're in the area, get yourself over there, have some fun, and say hello to the man who was once known in WWE and probably still is to this very day as the masterpiece and Kalito's former tag team partner too. All in all, as well, something surprised me this past week as well with the last episode, the hundredth episode, and not only the hundredth episode, the episode ninety nine episode on a. Uh, SoundCloud of the podcast. Episode 99 got 38 downloads. Episode 100 got 24 downloads. And it's still growing to this very day. That shocked me. That's a bit of a surprise. Because that's never happened that way before. So I think I might have cracked the code in terms of downloads as well. So be sure to check that out. SoundCloud. Dot com forward slash wrestling underscore matters underscore podcast. Also, facebook.com forward slash WM podcast. I haven't done that much this week because, like I said, I've been recovering. I've been working on a few things as well. But I should be back doing scheduled things on that uh, on that uh, Facebook page as well as my Games Matter Facebook page very, very soon sometime this week as well. So look out for it as well. Also, guys, a uh, big thank you to Daz and uh, the and Roxy last week. Yeah, she had an co- internet connection problem. She, a few of her friends, family came round and obviously messed about with the internet connection while she was on my stream on my podcast. And she obviously they obviously de- didn't listen to a word she said because she actually told them that she was going to be on a podcast, and obviously they didn't pay attention. So uh, 
Nothing to worry about, though. She, she was on the podcast and she enjoyed herself. I know she did. I told the Daz as well. And speaking of Daz, March 13th episode of wrestling of Max Wrestling Podcast. Be sure to check them out, guys, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on their website as well. They are the runners of the Swift Talk Network as well, which is what we are. For more information, check them out quick, and also check out the episode as well of the Max Wrestling Podcast as well. Be sure to check that out because the anniversary show is coming up on March 13th, and I'm co-hosting it. That's right. It'll be joined. I'll be joining Daz, and we'll be joined by, I believe, James Belmont, uh, Kenny is supposed to be coming on Roxy as well I believe Is supposed to be coming on I might be wrong But I know Kenny's coming on Because I had a way with Kenny during the week as well And he is correcting what he says guys I asked for a bit of advice But at the end of the day What people have got to understand I've had a lot of haters in these two years These past two years on the podcast I don't dwell on haters I don't dwell on people But I have a lot of people you know, like I said in that promo last week, you know, saying, oh, I should do this kayfabe and this, this, and this. When I started this podcast, I didn't start this to be kayfabe. I wanted to make this podcast. The concept of this podcast was to be, was to be as real as it gets. Talk about the best of professional wrestling. Talk about, you know, get your views and opinions over. No boundaries like you go on these other podcasts. Oh, you do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. I know because I've seen it and I've listened to it as well. You know, just come on here, speak your mind. Drop a pipe bomb, the truth, here and there. You know, enjoy yourself. That's what this, this, that's what this podcast is all about. And obviously we get the haters, but the problem is, the haters, to me, are like trolls. They're not worth the time or the effort, and he's right. And this is advice to anybody else who's thinking of doing a podcast or streaming or whatever it is you're going to do online. Don't take any notice of them. Don't take no notice of them. Just remember why you're doing what you're doing it for. It's like I'm doing this because I'm a wrestling fan. And I love it. Uh, yes, it's good, bad, and sometimes ugly moments as well, especially on the WWE main roster and this, that, and the other. But you've got to remember why you're doing it for. You're not doing this to be liked. You're doing it for the love of professional wrestling, especially these podcasts as well. So, you no, know, like I say, guys, no matter what it is you're doing, a little piece of advice, all the haters, just don't get yourself in. Don't lower you yourself to their level at all. Just Focus on what you're doing, like I've been doing for the past two years. Last week was the 100th episode. April 4th is the two-year anniversary. And, uh, you know, like I said to many people during the week, and I said to Kenny as well, I'm not giving this up by a long shot. You could criticize me. You can do what you want. It ain't going to work. I'm not giving this up. I started this April 7th, and I don't damn sure plan on finishing it anytime soon. I will do this as long as my body tells me that I can do it. You know, I did a 100th episode last week. I got 200 left in me. I got, fuck, fuck that. I got 900 left in me. I ain't quitting this by a long shot. The only thing I, the only problem I have is just finding find the balance with my online work that I'm doing on me Games Matter channel as well. But, hey, like I said, my number one priority is the Wrestling Matters podcast, no matter what. The Wrestling Matters channel. I'm not looking to make any money from that or anything, but it's, it's it was like a base for the podcast. But it's growing slowly, but it's very growing. Um... I found out a few tricks as well uh, to promote the podcast on that channel as well. Um, it's not going to be like live stream moments or anything like that. Yes, I do the live streams of the Raw Review and this, that and the other. But uh, what I've done these past couple of weeks is a test to promote the podcast on the channel. Like I, when you set up the live stream, I put to be uploaded on Monday such and such. Like I said, 9 p.m. UK time, 4 p.m. Eastern. Because it's going to be on the Swift Talk Network, Network as well. You know, the Wrestling Matters podcast, episode 101, episode 102, episode 103. That's just to get more people, you know, more eyes on the on the product. And more people out there that don't really notice that. You know, so, so if they're like walking around or going around YouTube, searching YouTube. Hopefully my podcast will pop up. In their search engine, and they can look at that and think, "Okay, I'm a wrestling fan. I could dig this." They can come on, subscribe, and keep up to date with the podcast as well. I don't know if it's worked yet, but we'll see. We'll find out this week. So it's like I say, you don't know these things, guys. You have to be creative, not just in what you're doing. If you're doing a games YouTube channel or whatever, you have to be creative. You have to be, you know, you have to use your brain. You have to try these things out. And if you don't try them out, you never know. And if they don't work, you don't do them again. It's as simple as that, you know, but you never know until you try. Anyway, guys, I found out this week as well, going into wrestling news, I found out this week as well that Carl uh, Anderson and Doc Gallows are heading for the WWE, but they won't be going on NXT. They're going straight to the main roster. So I don't know if that's going to be a good thing. 
It would beef up the uh, tag team division on the main roster, definitely. Uh, do I think they should be, or they should go on to NXT? Yes. And hopefully they can join forces with Finn Balor as well. But from the looks of it, they're going on to the main roster. Um, and this would be good for Doc Gallows in a way, because the previous times he's been in WWE, before he went to Japan and all that, he was Festus at one point, and then he was a member of uh, CM Punk's Straight Edge Society, and the whole thing never worked out for him. That's uh, hence to the CM Punk stuff that happened and everything. And hopefully now this guy can get a break. Now he's with somebody who he can work with, and WWE can think, "No, oh, this could work here." Cause, you know, because you got Carl Anderson and Doug Gallows. These two are a great tag team. They were smash it in the Japan. Maybe they can be a smash it in WWE. Maybe they can, you know, carry the WWE tag team division on their backs and uh, take it to a new level and take it to a level that it needs to be done. Because quite frankly, I'm getting sick of the new day. Uh, the Usos do my heading. They're a great tag team, but they've got to the point right now where they're, they're really getting on my bloody nerves. And uh, it needs fresh faces. And it's a pity that uh, WWE couldn't sign, uh, what to call it as well, uh, beer money. Like I believe they were trying to do it at one point. But uh, either way, it is what it is at the end of the day. Should I do this now? Yeah, you know what, I'm going to do this now. You know, I haven't got nothing planned. Like I say, I, I am, uh, I'm f- more focused on preparing for the, uh, the Max Wrestling Podcast episode that I'm doing next week. Well, I'm going to be taking part in next week because, like I say, I'm co-hosting it. But I found this on What Culture. Yes, I know, What Culture Strikes Again. Top 10 wrestlers that Hulk Hogan refused to lose against. Now, I'll be the first to admit this, guys. Like I've said many, many times on the podcast, Hulk Hogan is my idol. He's the reason why I'm doing these podcasts. He's the reason I'm, in, I'm watching professional wrestling. He's the reason I turned that clicker on. I thought, yay, I found my sport in life and my need in life. You know, without him, I wouldn't be watching wrestling to this very day. But there has been some questionable things that he's done in terms of his business brain and, and that. You know, number 10 was the the guy he refused to, to lose against was uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Now, I can understand this. The reason why he refused to lose against Roberts is because he didn't think he would draw money. Because on an episode of... Um, I believe the episode was a snake pit episode at one point. Hogan took the DDT and Jake the Snake Roberts got cheered. And uh, if you watch uh, Jake Roberts' Pick Your Poison DVD, um, he, he talks about this as well in great detail. Uh, he, he hit him with a DDT, the crowd cheered. Uh, Roberts was supposed to be healed. This is, when, this is back when you know, baby faces and heels mattered. And Jake Roberts was supposed to be a heel and they cheered him out the villain. You know, and... You know, babyface and babyface back then was, you know, non-existent. You know, you couldn't have that. You had to be one heel, one babyface. But, um, yeah, Ed Hogan didn't think it would draw money. Uh, That's why he ended up going into a program with the Ultimate Warrior, later on with, you know, Macho Man Randy Savage and that, you know, the infamous snake bite. The other one as well was uh, Mr. Perfect. Now, i got to admit this while I'm watching this right now. These two were in the last... It was supposed to be, I think, the original plan from what I got. I'm here. If you hear in the background, I apologize because I'm watching this right now. I'm just trying to get the list because it's on the YouTube channel as well. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, the last two opponents in the 1990 Royal Rumble were Hulk Hogan, who was the WWF champion at the time, WWE champion at the time. Fuck you, Wildlife Fund. Um, as well, Mr. Perfect as well. Now, apparently, it was originally planned Mr. Perfect versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania. Or, they wanted Mr. Perfect to go into a program. And there was like a, there was a little program developing as well, because there was at one point, I believe it was Saturday night's main event, <coughs> excuse me, when um, Mr. Perfect smashed up the WWF title belt as well with a hammer. You know, uh, Leaping Lenny, who was the genius at the time, was his manager. He even got a victory over Hogan. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But apparently, from what I got on this, guys, the uh, the, uh, the the main s- surprising was uh, it was supposed to be Mr. Perfect, and I believe it was supposed to be Mr. Perfect going one on one with Hulk Hogan for the WWF title at the time. But they didn't go with it. They had to set the eyes. He defeated him, about, and then it was the infamous hammer throwing. Thing. And they, they had a face, like I said, the, the last two in the Royal Rumble in 1990, they had the face off, and then uh, he gets thrown out, doesn't get anything after it, and then at WrestleMania 6, Mr. Perfect ended up facing Hogan's buddy, Bruce Bar- Barber Beefcake, and then Hogan went on to the Ultimate Warrior. Um, which made no sense because that would have been okay. Yeah, he gets thrown over, like I say, he gets thrown over the top rope in January, Mr. Perfect, and then, you know, he threw him over the top rope, jumps right into a match at, WrestleMa- at WrestleMania with them. Um, 
Bruce Beefcake. But apparently Hogan said that he didn't think he was capable of feuding with him, or even on Hogan's level. Mr. Mr. Perfect, that is. That's what I was told. I'll, unless, like I say, you can watch the video for yourself. I'll leave it in the description below. But uh, yeah, that was the, the main thing on that one. The next one was Randy Savage. Randy Savage was Hogan's worst. Hogan's was Randy Savage's worst nightmare. He was like a cockroach, you know. He was like an absolute cockroach to him, you know, and he, he, he couldn't, f you know, he couldn't let him win the title. You had to be around him, and then he would drop the title to cause the, uh, you know, he would drop the title to Andre to cause the tournament at WrestleMania 4. Granted, he would get it back off March all year later, which he did. At WrestleMania 5, the makeup house exploded, yada, yada, yada. But apparently, before all this, Hogan turned down a match against Savage at WrestleMania 2, because these two were supposed to be competing at Mania 2. Apparently, you know, that clusterfuck, the three city one, even though it seemed a good idea at the time. Um, and yeah, and then Hogan said he'll drop the title to Andre, granted he'd get it back off Macho at WrestleMania, which he did, WrestleMania 5. It, it just, you know, it, it, it just came on the same thing. And the match at WrestleMania 5, the rematch was supposed to take place at SummerSlam 89, but it didn't. Even though Macho and Hogan were still in the match, <coughs> Even though Macho and Hogan were still in the match, the original plan, which was Hogan versus Macho at SummerSlam 89, turned into Hulk Hogan teaming up with Beefcake against Macho Man and a guy called Zeus. Now, if you watch No Who's Bad movie, you know who the fuck I'm talking about. And then that led to Hogan, you know, the plan going into WrestleMania 7 because Slaughter won the title off Macho at um, WrestleMania. At that Royal Rumble. Slaughter won the title off Warriors, is what I meant to say. And then he went into WrestleMania and dropped it to Hogan at Mania. And, you know, it's just everywhere you go, they couldn't let Macho have an established title. One point as well, when he won the title in WCW, um, when he won the title in WCW, he ended up being, you know, the next night on Raw. I believe he beat Kevin Nash at a Bash of the Beach pay-per-view in a tag team match for the WCW title. Next night on Raw, Hogan beats him for the title. Uh, next night on Nitro, Hogan beats him for the title. It's simple as that, really. It's, you, you can't get any logic than that. The next one is the Ultimate Warrior. Now, granted the Warrior beat Hogan at Mes WrestleMania 6, but when you look back on the footage and you see the referee count, Hogan kicked out after three. And he kicked out almost as soon as referee Earl Hurton had counted the three. He stole the moment and everything. He handed the belt over him and yada, yada, yada. But then he established this plan in WCW to lure Hogan, to lure the Warrior in so he can get his rematch, which he did at Halloween Havoc, which turned out to be the worst rematch and the worst match in wrestling history. Uh, despite the fact Hogan got the victory and got his revenge on him. You know, it, he just couldn't let a great moment like that slide. I dread to think what he'd do if he tried to do it with The Rock. Because The Rock beat him in Mania 18. I, I dread to think what would happen. I mean, I think at WrestleMania at one point, I think, that, I think at SummerSlam, I believe it was SummerSlam. They tried to have a match with the Warrior and Hogan at a SummerSlam pay-per-view. And I believe it was 91. But that turned into the Triangle of Terror match. Warrior Hogan against uh, Slaughter, Adnan and Mustafa. With Sid Justice as the referee. And what turned out to be Warrior's last night, last match. At least for another six months. Or maybe eight. Because he came back at Mania 8. WrestleMania 8. Anyway. Ric Flair was the next one. Now these two were supposed to wrestle at WrestleMania 8. But apparently, Hogan didn't want to lose to Flair, and Flair didn't want to lose to Hogan. So they had to drop it. Um, he won the title of 92 Royal Rumble, and the pieces in, were in place for them to go out at the WrestleMania, but it never happened. Hogan refused to, like I said, Hogan refused to lose to Flair. Flair refused to lose to Hogan. You know, and one thing led to another. But it ended up happening in WCW, despite the fact that Ric Flair played some big part in getting Hogan into WrestleMania, into uh, WCW. They had a match at Bash of the Beach. Hogan won the WCW title. And then the rematch never happened that much. And then they drifted their own separate ways. And then they came back in about 99 and had that cage match, which Ric Flair eventually won the WCW title from. You know, it's his thing. I mean, the Bret Hart thing as well. Bret Hart was the next person. You all remember that claustrophobic at WrestleMania 9 when... Uh, Brett lost the title to Yokozuna and then Yokozuna ended up losing the title to Hogan. Well, apparently Brett was angered of that. And Hogan came down, challenged Yokozuna to a match. But I believe it was the other way around because Yokozuna challenged Hogan to a match. Hogan accepted, went in, took the title, blah, blah, blah. The match was supposed to be set. You know, Hogan to pass the torch on to the new generation, which was Bret Hart. But Bret Hart, it was supposed to be the match at SummerSlam, Hogan versus Bret Hart. Hogan, you know, these two collide. Hogan passed the torch on Bret Hart. But apparently Hogan didn't want to lose to somebody who was smaller than him. Hence him losing 
to King of the Ring, to Yokozuna and King of the Ring in that clusterfuck ending that made Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose match look good. You know, the exploding camera, and then he leaves and goes to uh, WWE. And WCW, rather. Speaking of WCW, there was the clusterfuck at, at um, what I call it? There was the clusterfuck at uh, Bash of the Beach 2000, which goes on to my next person, because the next person was Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett was supposed to compete, defend the WCW title against Hogan at Bash of the Beach 2000. It got to the point where Hogan, at the time, agreed to lose to, Ho- to Jarrett. He agreed to lose to him. He agreed to lose to him. Then... He agreed to lose to him, but when it came down to that day, Hogan played his creative control card and said that he's not losing to Jarrett. Hence what happened. There was this argument back and forth, and then it got to the ring. Jarrett lays down, walks out with the bell, hence that promo with uh, you know Russo at the end firing Hogan. Despite the fact that it was supposed to be a work shoot in case what Russo says. If you watch um, Bischoff's... Um, Legends with JBL, which was very fascinating. Uh, obviously, it didn't take too kindly to it, Russo, and it went out. But apparently, when it, according to Bischoff, Russo went into business for himself, and then he made the match later on that evening, which was Booker T versus Jeff Jarrett, and Booker T ended up winning his very first WCW World title. It, it, it was just a one big clusterfuck, and even Jarrett says it to this day. It was the uh, the leadership of it. The leadership was in the toilet. Shawn Michaels was the next person, and apparently Hogan didn't want to lose to Michaels at SummerSlam, which was uh, SummerSlam 05. He didn't want to lose to Michaels in the main event. Everybody thought, and even looking back on it now, maybe Michaels should have won that match, but Hogan didn't want to lose the match, and they could have had a rematch with it, but Hogan played the uh, I have injured my knee routine, and you know, he had that surgery to get out of it, and that's why you see uh, Michaels in the match bouncing around like, you know, He's overselling things and everything because he wasn't too happy with it. You know, they could have had a program. Speaking of that, the following year, he did exactly the same to Randy Orton. You know, Randy Orton should have probably beaten him at SummerSlam then the following year. If he didn't, wasn't going to lose to Shawn Michaels, Randy Orton should have probably beaten him the following year because he was a legend killer. He was beating legends, spitting in their faces, you know, beat Shawn Michaels, you know, beat up Jake Roberts, beat up. And then the one big ultimate legend, which was Hogan, he challenges him to a match at SummerSlam in 06, but Hogan ended up winning. Despite the fact that Orton hit him with the RKO and then puts him on top of, you know, put Hogan puts his foot on the ropes, ref counts to three, Randy Orton supposedly wins the match, then he had to restart the match, and then Hogan ends up winning the match. But, you know, I've always said the reason why, because he was undefeated at SummerSlam. That's the reason why he probably lost. He didn't want to lose. He wanted to be like The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Oh, I didn't want to lose it. To that. I mean, I'm a Hulk Hogan mark to this very day, but some of the stuff he's done. I mean, Jesus. I mean, I mean, and the number one one was Hulk, was Stone Cold Steve Austin. These two were supposed to wrestle. You know, everything, the, 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 the seeds were planted for the match at WrestleMania 18, which eventually ended up going to The Rock. But it was going to be Stone Cold and Hogan. Now, Hogan wanted to go over on Austin. Austin didn't want that. And hence the back and forth thing of the reason why this match never took place. Uh, because Hogan, I think I don't think Austin didn't want to lose to Hogan, which was fair enough. Uh, but uh, I mean, just think if these two had a match, Hogan and Austin, man, these two would have had an epic match. I would have probably went bankrupt if I had if I had enough money. If I was a millionaire, I would go bankrupt to see that match. Seriously, but uh, it didn't happen. I mean, this was back when Hogan was a part of the NWO, leading into WrestleMania, and then he just didn't want to. He just didn't want to lose to Hogan, and then Hogan ended up, like I say, having the match with The Rock. Or Austin went into Scott Hall, and then uh, Austin left for a year. At the most, to do to, to creative control, and also, also, I think Austin didn't didn't like the way he saw or what he saw with um, Shawn Michaels' situation. The way Hogan ended up getting the victory out of the Shawn Michaels match, so Austin was like, "I'm staying well clear of that." So, I mean, you you can't blame him, to be honest with you, because even though I'm a Hogan mark and I like to see Hogan win, but looking back at it from a booking standpoint, maybe Michaels should have won that match at. Uh, SummerSlam 05. But that about wraps the part one up, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed that. I'll be back in part three, and part two is the Raw review as well. And I'll be back in part three with a f- with another uh, with SmackDown and NXT. So stay tuned for that. And then I've got something else in mind as well for part four besides the TNA. ICW and Ring of Honor, so stay tuned for that. And I'll be back, like I say, in part three with SmackDown and Ring of Honor. Until then, enjoy part two, enjoy the Royal Review 
the Raw review that I did this past week on the Wrestling Matters channel. So, uh, see you in a bit. If you like the Wrestling Matters podcast, why not check out their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash WM podcast and like the page and show your support to the podcast that stands up for professional wrestling. The Wrestling Matters podcast. Wrestling Matters wrestling fans. What's happening, ladies and gents? It's me, it's me, it's at H-E-A-D, back with you for another video straight out of Millersburg, baby. I hope you guys are doing well. <coughs> Great start. Uh, as you can clearly tell, in a way, even though I am getting better, guys, I am still look like shit, to be honest. Uh, these past couple of weeks, you know, the stuff on my YouTube channel, uh, Gamers Matter, and my podcast in general. I have not had a very good couple of weeks in terms of illness. Um, I've had a bad chest. I've had a terrible, terrible cough, which has driven, driven me so far up the wall, I can't think straight. But I'm in hangover mode now, so I'm on the verge of getting back to normal. And uh, hopefully I'll be right as rain. So I'm back doing this again and everything and I was that's why I was in two minds of whether or not to do this today because I'm I'm still recovering but I promised you guys I'd do it so I'm going to do it nonetheless and I was also in two minds whether or not to do it in video webcam form or a podcast form so uh yeah although though it is a very good thing right quick little uh promotions here and there before we start I just want to get these out the way before we talk about the main priority, which is Monday Night Raw. For those of you that don't know, check out my episode 100 of uh, the Wrestling Matters podcast. Big thank you to everyone who supported me on the podcast and supported me on this channel, but mainly supported me on the podcast. And also, March 13th, I will be co-hosting Max Wrestling podcast as well with Daz. And I have no idea who's coming on the show, and quite frankly, I don't care. We all know we're going to have a good laugh. And the only thing I do know and I care about is the fact that I'm co-hosting it. So it should be interesting very much indeed. I made a couple of appearances on that show, maybe three at the most. And uh, it's now got to the point right now where I'm co-hosting their anniversary show. So uh, that should be a hoot. Also, as well, I've got a Wix website. It's nearly finished. It should be out either this week or probably I'm going to leave it until next week. So everything should be cushy in that respect, at least. So without further ado, though, ladies and gents, all that promotional uh, good housekeeping out the way, let's get to Monday Night Raw. There's going to be two articles in the description below, guys, on... Uh, the very latest backstage news on a possible return of the WWE brand, brand extension, the brand split. Uh, and Stone Cold Steve Austin explain why, is, why uh, Roman Reigns needs to turn heel. I'll let you read them out yourself. They'll be in the description below. Now, for Monday Night Raw. Dean Ambrose confronted the, the World Heavyweight Champion demanding a match against him for the world title. He demanded a world title shot. Triple H said he think about it and let him know by the end of the night, but put him in a match against Alberto Del Rio. Now, fast forward to the main event. Might as well do this and get out of the way. Alberto beats uh, Dean Ambrose, or gets beat by Dean Ambrose by DQ because Triple H comes out and six the League of Nations on the Dean Ambrose, the beatdown ensues. Triple H gets in his face, yada, yada, yada. Ambrose co cocks him and then starts beating the hell out of him. Triple H pedigrees him, grants him his match. So I'm guessing it's next week. It's going to be uh, Dean Ambrose one on one with Triple H for the world title. Also, Triple H is scheduled to defend the world title on the WWE Network special, which is coming this month as well. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. I guessed it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be. Uh, Oh, excuse me. It was supposed to be the uh, Brock Lesnar versus Luke Harper, but since the Brock Lesnar Bray Wyatt match has been thrown out, I guess that card has changed. I don't know the card. I haven't seen the card. Um, I know Brock Lesnar will be there, but uh, he probably won't be facing uh, what's his name? 
Lukaku anymore. But it seems that we're going into a war title match next week on Raw. Now, to the other main talking point, which was... Uh, now, also, just, just to go off last week, when Shane McMahon returned, Stephanie delivered her speech on her Legacy of Excellence Award, and that uh, basically went off one, which is not where they're doing. But the other main talking point was Undertaker returned. And Mr. McMahon thinks he had the Undertaker in his pocket. And uh, turns out it wasn't true because Undertaker came out, got in the ring, face to face. Vince turned around the crowd saying, he's my force of destruction, yada, yada, yada. Taker grabs him by the throat and says, you know what I'm capable of doing in Hell in the Cell once that door shuts. The blood of your son will be on your hands, not mine. A little chilling warning there to the Undertaker. Uh, Bubba Ray Dudley beats Jey Uso again. I don't know where this match, whether this uh, match is going with him, with the Usos and Dudleys. I hope they don't make a Dudleys match at WrestleMania against the Usos because, like I said on my podcast, no one would give a shit. You'd be best off making it interesting, like adding Rikishi in and bringing back Spike Dudley and making it a six man or something like that. Because, like I said, I mean, be honest, do you really care about a Dudley's versus Uso match? No. I don't, and I know probably you don't either. <coughs> Excuse my cough. And uh, Naomi and Brie Bella, it seems this beef between Brie Bella and uh, Lana. Um, what that is for, I don't know. Will we see Lana fight Brie Bella at some point? We all know Brie Bella's on her way on her way out. She's made a crystal clear that she's going to be leaving WWE very, very soon. So this will be just a goodbye thing. And uh, Ryback, you know, makes claims that he wants a solo push. He wants the spotlight on him and says that if he's not going to get the spotlight, the spotlight, he's going to take the spotlight. And beats up Adam Rose in the process. Uh, what is in the future for for Ryback? I don't know. Quite frankly, what's in the future for the Wyatt family? What will the Wyatt family be doing at WrestleMania? Now, I have heard a rumor, and that's why I made one on my U on my Games Matter channel that uh, there's talks about adding Bray Wyatt to the Triple Threat match, into a Triple Threat match against Brock and, and Dean Ambrose for the street fight. I wouldn't mind seeing that. I know it's not going to happen, but I, like I say, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Uh, question is, where does that leave the Bra uh, the Wyatt family? Where is, what's going to be done with Bray Wyatt and the co for WrestleMania? I mean, it's like I said yesterday on the podcast, to build these guys up, and then I swear Vince just grabs out of Bray Wyatt at some point and just goes, no, 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 you're coming back down. No, that's it. You're not going as far as that. It, it just makes no sense what WWE are doing with the Wyatt family. And granted that they should never have broke up in the first place, but WWE decided to put them back together and all they've done is bury them. And I'll go on record and saying this right now. If you were going to do that, what the fuck did you put them back together for in the first place? You know, that's just my opinion on that. Russo, uh, Rusev and... Uh, Sheamus squashed the Lucha Dragons in a, yeah, whatever match for me. Uh, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks ended the draw to determine the number one contender for uh, Charlotte Stevens' title, and we'll get a title shot at WrestleMania. We all know what's going to happen. It ended in a draw because it's going to be a triple threat match between the three. A little spoiler there. Uh, three members of the Four Horsewomen will five for the Divas title at WrestleMania. A little spoiler for you there. Uh, and based off that draw and, the, and that match, you can clearly see it's going to happen. And for some strange reason, Dolph Ziggler jobs out to the Miz. For what reason, I don't know. Also, Chris Jericho and AJ Styles defeat the, the New Day and challenge the New Day to a match next week on Raw, this time for the tag titles. They want a tag team title shot, so that should be interesting in itself. And yes, this goes to w w the, another rumor that I've heard. 
it's based on WrestleMania involving Kevin Owens. Everybody wants to see Kevin Owens beat or face AJ Styles. Doesn't seem that's going to happen. It seems that Kevin Owens and Big Show have had a problem lately. Uh, and Big Show defeats Kevin Owens by counter based off what happened on SmackDown. I saw something today on the internet. A picture of WrestleMania banner in the background with Kevin Owens on one side, like P and G things where you put them together and you stick them in that picture. And on the other side, Sting. Which got me to thinking, since we're not going to see a Kevin Owens AJ Styles match, I don't know if we're going to even see an AJ a Kevin Owens Sami Zayn match. Looking for something to do for Sting at WrestleMania, since he's going to be in the Hall of Fame, so he's going to be at WrestleMania in some capacity. Kevin Owens may be Sting versus Sting. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Sting's put over to Seth Rollins, so you know it. It's interesting. Question is, will it work, and will Sting be able to do to go? Because uh, last time we saw Sting in the ring, he got injured uh, facing. Um, Seth Rollins for the world title which is the reason why Seth Rollins ended up winning in the first place because I believe Sting was going to win the world title and if he hadn't got injured you know he had to, he had to go back and keep the belt on Seth Rollins because you can tell that he got injured after the match you can see it in, in, its, in, it, you know, in his face so will we see a Kevin Owens versus Sting match at Wrestlemania please God, don't make it a big show versus Kevin Owens match at Wrestlemania if you're, going to use Ke if you're going to use Big Show in a match, just stick him in the Andrew the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Please. Don't give him to Kevin Owens. Uh, all in all, okay Raw for me. Uh, I will give it a solid 7 out of 10. Uh, 3 out of 5. If I'm scoring out of 5, 3 out of 5, 7 out of 10. Because, yes, there were some idiotic moments. I had some questionable moments as well, but and this thing with our truth and gold dust is still going on. But all in all, you know, I had no complaints about it. It didn't make me there was no captivating holy shit moments like there was with Shane McMahon last week. But uh there was no worse things either. And take a made an impact like I said he would. So based on that, seven three seven out of ten, three out of five. Uh, and that is the end of the Raw review. So what do you guys think, if you see this, what do you guys think of Raw? What do you guys think of, you know, the building to WrestleMania? You know, leave a comment below. Hell, get me on Twitter, at WN Podcast or Tony underscore Walker, and I might even read your name out on the podcast. Uh, 101 episode, the, the 101 episode coming up. If you uh, talk in there, uh, Leave a comment in there. You know, I'll take your name. I'll take the comment. I'll read it on the podcast. You never know. If you want to be, if you want to get mentioned on the podcast as well. By the way, speaking of podcasts, one of my colleagues at work wanted to get a mention on my podcast. He's doing something. Um, he's doing something uh, when they dress up as the you know the old school wrestlers back in the day kind of thing i've seen it all before it's happened before no you know people dressing up as macho man and hogan and stuff like that but what i look you want to get a mention on my podcast you want to get a shout out on my podcast or in anything i do let me know you know let me know in advance like i say get me on tony underscore walker on twitter wm podcast on twitter facebook.com forward slash wm podcast get me on there let me know if you want a shout out. You know, if you enjoy the show, if you've got information you want to do, you know, if you've got information that you want me to mention on the show, like promote on your show, on, on my podcast, no matter what, that's the only way you'll get a podcast. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not a mind reader. If you want a shout out, let me know. I'd be more than happy to give you a shout out on the podcast or mention whatever it is you're going to do or mention whatever it is you're going to. Uh, say, I mean, I mean, if you heard my colleague at work, man, Jesus Christ, he was like he was whinging, 
was it bitching and moaning. But like I say, if you want it, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the guy, but you know, he, he just drives me at the wall sometimes. He's a, he's a he's a great guy and a great person to work with, but he can't push my buttons on occasion, can't you? You know who you are. But at the end of the day, if you want to mention, if you want me to mention you, let me know in advance, or let me know, give me something to mention you, or just let me know that you want a shout out. I'll be more than happy to do it. And with that being said, guys, hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, leave a like, like if you like what you see. Show your support to the Games Matter channel. If you want to see more of this stuff, the only way you'll get to see it for more wrestling content and for weekly podcasts as well. And for more information on my website and that, hit the subscribe button, show your support. I'm on 195 subscribers. I'd love to get the 200. Uh, and with the only way I can do that, with your support also check out my games channel as well for the future live streams i haven't been doing any live streams this week because like i said i'm still recovering from uh the cough and i'm sick of coughing on stream so you know i'm sick of people listening in their earphones and that coughing hear me coughing and that which is just ridiculous but anyway for your future live streams go and subscribe to the games matter channel all the links will be in the description below thank you so much for your support not only on the wrestling channel this wrestling matters channel the uh, 100th episode and my podcast in general. I love you guys. Thank you for all your support as well. Check out my shoe promo I did as well. Um, I'm in two minds whether or not to put that up uh, this week as well. I will review the ICW Friday Night Fight Club this week on the podcast. I'm not going to do it this week on the YouTube channel. I will do it this week on the podcast. I will catch up with ICW this week on the podcast. That I can promise you. And until next time, guys, wrestling matters on this channel because I don't give a damn about sports entertainment. See you next time. Peace out. If you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, why not follow the Wrestling Matters Podcast now on Twitter at WM Podcast for all professional wrestling news. Wrestling Matters Wrestling fans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Hope you enjoyed the raw review there. Now, we're going to talk SmackDown and NXT. Now, SmackDown had the following results. Uh, Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens had a confrontation which led to a main event, which I'll get to in a second. The matches were as follows. The results were as follows. Sheamus and Rusev of the League of Nations defeat the Usos. Dolph Ziggler gets a little bit of revenge against the Miz for what happened on Monday night because Miz beat him Monday, so Dolph gets his revenge. Goldust rejects our truths attempt to make up. Less said about that, the better. The Divas title number one contenders match ended in a double disqualification. Huge WrestleMania announced, which I'm guessing is the triple threat match. Um, I'll get to in this. I'll check that out in a second. Styles beats Kofi Kingston. The original WrestleMania match is announced for Roadblock on the 12th. Brock Lesnar will battle Bray Wyatt on the 12th at Roadblock. And as it goes down to Kevin Owens one-on-one -on -one with, uh, what to call it, Kevin Dean Ambrose. Now, clearly still in pain after suffering respective onslaughts from Brock Lesnar and the World Heavyweight Champion Triple H in recent weeks, Dean Ambrose engaged in another knockdown, dragout, smackdown main event against the Intercontinental Champion Kevin Owens. Throughout the brutal showdown, no matter what Kevin Owens threw at the war-torn lunatic fringe, would not give in. In the final moments, however, Owens looked ready to finally pull, put out his tough-as-nails opponent for good when he delivered a devastating kick to Ambrose's jaw, but the Highly resilient Ambrose lifted his knees to counter the prize fight to Sinton and then hit Dirty Deeds for a huge three count, meaning Ambrose won. Will Ambrose continue the momentum? I guess we'll have to find out soon, won't we? This coming week on Raw, but there you go. That's what happened on SmackDown, guys. Now, I'll ch double check WrestleMania as I'm doing this. Uh, check the, um, the matches. Yep. It's been signed. Revolutionary Tangle. The Revolutionaries Tangle at WrestleMania in a Divas Triple Threat match. It will be Becky Lynch, Charlotte, and Sasha Banks for the Divas title at WrestleMania. All the matches, uh, Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose in the street fight. Shane scheduled the battle, uh, The Undertaker in Hell in the Cell. And, of course, the World Heavyweight Champion chip match involving Roman Reigns and Triple H. And I think The Rock's supposed to be back for WrestleMania as well, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. Now, going on to that, let's go to NXT. NXT. Uh, main talking points of what's been going down on NXT lately. Oh yeah, Adrian Neville 
is back. Well, seems to be back on NXT. Like I said during the week, you should you might as well fucking stay there because you know nobody. I mean, he's not doing anything on Raw, so you might as well just stay there. Uh, the quick hit results uh, clashes with uh, what I call Finn Balor clashes with uh, Neville and Baron Corbin crashes uh, Austin Aries debut. So the matches we're going to now. Uh, the Vaughn villains get a huge win over Hugo Knox and Tucker Knight. Emma defeats Emma. Emma defeats Emma defeats Santana Jarrett. Baron Cole. Man, Baron Corbin ambushes Austin Aries' debut, which I'm guessing I, he attacked him coming down the aisle. Uh, so that footage I saw on the internet, which was recording, I guess, for today, well, for this episode at least. Samson defeats Steve Coulter, and in an untitled match, Finn Balor goes one-on-one with Neville and beats him. Apparently never dominated the uh, champion, but uh, Balor gets the huge victory. So that was the end and that's the nxt main talking points guys keep watching nxt each and every wednesday on the wwe network be sure to check it out it is the number one brand in wwe now guys i'm going to end this part now because i'm going to play an audio clip clip uh, from what happened during the week because i got a little something something about uh, vince mcmahon wanting to ban the styles clash yeah i'm not going to say what i felt i'm going to play the audio clip for what i got this week and then i'll be back in the part after it, I will go to a break and I'll be back in the following part with uh, TNA and Ring of Honor if I can fit it in as well. So stay tuned for that. I'll be right back right after this audio. We'll go to a break and I'll be back for TNA and Ring of Honor. So see you in a bit. Yo, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? It is me. It is me. It is at HEAD back with you for another wrestling related review or wrestling related content breaking news. This is a review of what I've just seen. Okay, so that's why I'm bringing it to you guys right now. Unfucking believable. Okay, again, Vince McMahon, Mr. Big Shot, wants to ban something. Again, he wants to ban the Styles Clash. According to an article that I've got today, and I'll read a little bit of it today, it appears that Vince McMahon wants AJ Styles to no longer use the Style Clash while in WWE. It said that after the fast lane pay per view, Vince found out that former WWE employee Yoshi Tatsu suffered a broken neck from the Styles Clash, and Vince does not want to risk any WWE talent that could be injured from it. What the fuck does this have to do with WWE? Yeah, Tatsu got injured from it, Lionheart got injured from it, but it was probably their fault. Okay, not saying it is, I don't know the full story, but why does something like that have to cause Vince to ban the Styles Clash? Without that, you know, that's the move that AJ Styles has been perfecting for God knows how long. That's the move that we all knew him for. And once again, Vince and his out of touch bullshit has to friggin', you know. WWE, I think WWE are on the verge of trying to ruin its styles again, and I, and I ain't going to stand for it, man. Vince wants to ban because a former WWE employee suffered a broken neck. Yoshi Tatsu. Yeah. First, the curb stomp. There has to be, you know, what pisses me off is he's banning it without with them can work towards you know, like a way where they can do it safely. Styles has been doing the Styles Clash safely. Yes, there's been the other occasions where he's happened to break people's necks and stuff like that. But why does that have to do... What does Yoshi Tatsu have to do with WWE? He's not in WWE anymore. You know, the, the band the style, the band the curb stomp because the curb stomp risks head injuries and concussions and that, even though people probably landing on their sides and that. It drives me insane. This is what drives me insane. This whole injury thing. Yes, I understand it's a big deal, and I get that. But this big deal is ruining superstars. I.e., if they ban the Styles Clash, this will ruin AJ Styles. Yes, he's got the calf killer, that submission hold. But without the Styles Clash, style AJ Styles will, might as well. You might as well change his name. Without that, it pisses me off. And I want to share this breaking news with you guys today. AJ Styles, the Styles Clash, may possibly be banned in WWE. 
according to an article, Ringside News Doc, Ringside News article. It's it, 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 it pisses me off. It really does. And I'm sick and tired of it. Oh, God almighty. I mean, what are they going to ban next? I dread to think what the fuck they're going to ban next. You know, and it's, it's like, you know, it's like on here as well, right? I'll read some of the comments back. Uh, Craig Phoenix. The Styles Clash to be banned, and yet Del Rio's double stomp off the top rope onto his opponent's chest is still perfectly legal. You know, common sense here, anyone? Seriously? It, it It's fucking frustrating as hell being a wrestling fan. I love WWE. I've been watching it all my life. But Vince needs to wake up and smell the coffee and get out of this out of touch bullshit. Like I say, without the Styles Clash, you'd be best off changing AJ Styles' name and calling him something else. Because without the Styles Clash, he's nothing. You take the Styles Clash away, you take an AJ Styles away from WWE's of what you want to do with WWE. You know, Styles Clash, it, 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 it's frustrating, as you can probably tell on my face, guys. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that to you guys today, a little quick video. Uh, also, a little bit of a news, in case you guys have seen it on this channel as well. Um, I've promoted two episodes of my podcast. Guys, they're not a live stream. As you can probably tell, it is to be uploaded. They will be uploaded on that day. I will put a link in there in the, uh, the stream promotion where, where I promoted it on, as a stream. I'll put a link in there for you to click on and then you can go, um, you know, and you can go and check on that, check it out. It will be in there and it'll be up for an hour after it goes out on it. But it airs nine o'clock each and every Monday, UK time, 4 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time on the wrestling matters channel so that's why it's there it's there for a promotion just to help get more people out there and get more people thinking hmm, there's a podcast here come check it out okay i'm unfortunately too but it's there you know it lets people know let's hopefully more people know as well also guys check out max wrestling podcast march 13th i will be co-hosting it with daz and the crew so look out for that as well and yeah i'll just leave you with that guys Stars clash to to potentially be banned. It is a question mark at the moment, but from the looks of it, Vince wants it because a former employee got his neck broken from it. My fucking brain. See you next time, guys. Peace out. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Galdem Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that? Slap nut. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 101 episode of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, ladies and gents. That's right. Now, we're going to talk TNA quickly. Uh, I'll go through the results and that. Only one good thing about TNA this past week, and I'll get to the other bits in a minute, which was Kurt Angle and Bobby Roode. Very good match. Very, very good match. And uh, Roode forced, got forced to tap out, and uh, Kurt ended up winning the match. After the match, there was a match made between the, the uh, Beer Money and the Wolves for the TNA World Tag Team titles as well, so... Be sure to check that out. I believe that's next week, the uh, match. Uh, next match, which was uh, Abyss and, Deca and uh, Decay. But Abyss went one-on-one -on -one with Jimmy Havoc in a, in a match, which was no DQ, which saw Abyss win after uh, Abyss. Black Hole slammed Havoc right on the barbed wire board. Bram 
also went well. Demo went one on one with EY. That's right. Demo from ICW went one on one with EY, and uh, Eric Eric Young ended up winning. Miracle Mike Bennett versus Drew Galloway, which saw Mike Bennett get the win and take and Mike Bennett take advantage of a confused uh, Drew Galloway to get the victory. One two three, and then it was the EC3 Spud Street Fight, which saw EC3 literally beat the piss out of uh, Rockstar Spud. All in all, pretty good show. And uh, Ethan Carter got a measure of, of revenge against uh, Rockstar Spud. But, uh, yeah, be interested to see what happens next for Ethan. He's looking for the world title. So, let's just say... Matt Hardy has got his hands full with that one. Now for the Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor started this week with S- Salas Young and the Bruiser, uh, the, the Bay City Bruiser, I believe his name is, beating the hell out of the boys. One-sided match, basically. Dalton Castle tried to do his best to save the boys and help the boys out a little bit, but it was to no avail. Uh, a great main event involving Adam Cole and Matt Seidel versus uh, one-on-one, uh, which actually saw Seidel beat Adam Cole. A uh, great match, start to finish, bell to bell, and Seidel ended up getting the victory against Adam Cole call thanks to a shooting star press and next week <coughs> next week on uh, Ring of Honor Brian Fury goes one on one with Leo Rush in the uh, top prospect tournament finals uh, as well so it's basically headlined by the top prospect tournament so we're not missing much in terms of Ring of Honor so hopefully we'll get we'll go back to Ring of Honor next week and and take it from there as well and uh, yeah it seems to Ring of Honor as well we're going back to the uh, Mr. Wrestling bullshit because apparently Mr. Wrestling was back on Carla Commentary with uh, Kevin Kelly this week. Mr. Wrestling, a.k.a. Steve Carino. Everybody knows it's Steve Carino. You can tell by the voice. We're not stupid. Uh, but all in all, a good uh, episode of Ring of Honor. And in a way, a good episode of TNA as well. I'll give TNA credit. They did do a good episode. A few BS things here and there. And that, but it was okay. I've seen worse shows. Uh, that about wraps it up for the Ring of Honor and TNA part. And I'll be back right after this quick timeout with uh, ICW and the outro as well with the promo and whatever any other stuff that I need to suggest as well but I'll be back right after this quick time out with ICW so stay tuned if you like the Wrestling Matters podcast why not check out their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash WM podcast and like the page and show you support to the podcast that stands up for professional wrestling the Wrestling Matters podcast Wrestling Matters wrestling fans well, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the penultimate portion of the Wrestling Matters podcast that's right hope you're all enjoying it so far and now we get on to ICW that's right insane Championship Wrestling. Now, Friday Night Fight Club 1. This is two Friday Night Fight Clubs I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen. In case you haven't figured it out. Friday Night Fight Club 1 was kicked off with Mikey Whiplash and Joe Coffey. Two phenomenal wrestlers going at it. Um, Mikey Whiplash refused to shake the hand later after his loss because Joe beat him. And uh, yeah, this match ain't over. It was just a good old-fashioned wrestling match, as it always is between these two. Especially with anyone who's in a match with Mikey Whiplash at the moment. It's always this, you know, just pure wrestling with him. And Mikey ended up getting the loss, but I don't think that little rivalry is over. Uh, Liam Thompson on his talk show. He shoves the girl down that he's supposed to hire to make him look good. And then in a case, music click hits. And uh, they come down and basically beat the piss out of... Mr. Thompson. Even though everything seemed to be cool with the NAK, considering what happened the week before when uh, Chris Renfrew announced that he was on Mark Dallas' side and he was ICW, despite the fact being these NAK as well. But despite the fact that it was on there, he calls Renfrew calls out uh, Red Lightning, and things seem to change because from out of nowhere, Stevie Boy and Wolfgang turned on Chris Renfrew and what soon to be BT. Uh, Wolfgang smacks uh, Renfrew with the uh, with the right hand with the brass knocks on, and then Stevie Boy hits uh, BT with a chair. So thanks to Red Lightning, he got his revenge for what happened when he got stunned and got an, an ass made out of him by uh, Renfrew in Dallas. He's broke up the New Age clique. Da, Noam Da and Kenny Williams took on the 55. Now this was an entirely different match to what. The 55 out with Chris Toll's men, uh, Dickie Davis and Lou King Sharp, where they just literally beat the piss out of them both. Uh, da and Williams did look amazing, but 55 ended up winning the match, despite the fact the titles were on the line. Um, da and Williams won the match, uh, lost the match rather, thanks to James R. Kennedy. A little distraction, and Shah Samuels manages to roll it up for the win. And then the black label jump, Chris Renfrew at the back. Uh, Grado gets a hard force 
win against Rees, uh, Liston Rees, I hope I pronounced that right, if I didn't I apologise, uh, but Grado got a hard forward win and manages to get the victory over him, uh, good little match, um, yeah, and it was a hard forward win for Grado because uh, Rees came to play, but Grado had more experience and proved that he was better. I had an awesome match to end that first show with uh, Galloway and Mark Coffey. Mark Coffey being, you know, the powerhouse of the uh, Polo Promotions. Uh, took Galloway to the limit, but it took a low blow, then the Future Shark, to allow Galloway to get the victory in what was a great match. Up until that point, of course. Black Label strike again. Now, ICW Fight Night Fight Club 2 started off with Dallas... Um, not Dallas, Red Lightning running his mouth, abusing his power, saying that it's his high CW. I fucking can't stand that guy, I can't honest. I like everybody in the black label. Anybody who's in the black label is talented. I've said this on Twitter, but I fucking despise Red Lightning. He's a fucking prick. You know, or as they all say, he's a wanker. Uh, and I hope he's listening to this as well, because I'm not, I'm not scared of it. Uh, and then outside, Liam seems to cool, to try and cool off, considering what's happened. And then gets jumped by Dallas and Sweeney. Yeah, and Dallas hits him with the golf club, uses the golf club as a weapon. The match that kicked off, which was Local Fire and Lionheart, the, Local Fire versus Lionheart and Lewis Garvin. Uh, the wee man was back doing his thing as well. Two great teams going at it. Uh, Lionheart was on the receiving end of a loss against the Local Fire, but managed to get his revenge by pinning Davy Boy, I believe. Um, and then uh, it was a Joe Henry saves wee man from a beatdown. But uh, Lionheart got the victory. Uh, two great teams. Local Fire are very good. Joe Henry and Davy Blaze. But uh, Davy Boy is the Zero G champion, and Joe Henry's made that crystal clear that he wants to fight uh, Davy for the title. And also, March 6th tapings of uh, ICW's Friday Night Fight Club. It's made it very, very clear that Mr. Anderson will be going one on one with Joe Henry as well, so be sure to check that out. I will be reviewing that on a future episode. Um, but two great teams went at it, and uh, Lionheart managed to get a small measure of, ev of revenge. Sammy, <coughs> oh, excuse me, Sammy J manages to start. Sammy finally stands up to Nikki Storm, had enough of her BS, and just completely snaps and literally beats the hell out of her to the point where um, Sammy has this shocked look on her face. Uh, not Sammy, Nikki has the shocked look on her face that she never thought that would happen. So be on the lookout for the first bet for the first. Be the first best in the galaxy against the second best in the galaxy very, very soon. But will that change? I have to wait and see. Damo went one on one with Matt Cross as well. Uh, Damo proving to be too powerful in what was a very good match. But Matt used his quickness and it was very effective because it was rocking the big man. Uh, and, spoiler alert, new ICW champion. More on that in the future episodes. Um, and he beat him and uh, he used his quickness to throw... And he threw everything at Demo, but Demo proved to be too much and too powerful and too big in what was a hard for win. I'll go straight on to Carmel and uh, Casey Owens. Carmel eventually ended up winning a match, which was a very good match against a very different Casey Owens. Not the one we usually see in the Owens twins. Um, a very different Casey, but... Uh, Carmel manages to come out victorious in what was a very good, what was a good match between the two. And uh, uh, Black Label bully Chris Toll as well, using their abusive power. And Courtney calls out Carmel after the uh, women's title match. And then Chris Renfrew ends up retaining the title in what was a hard-fought TLC match. And a very good TLC match as well. Uh, they used everything, weapons, tables, ladders and chairs. Even the highlight of the match, which was BT Gunn coming in to, sit, to lend a helping hand against his Conrad, Chris Renfrew, jumping off the balcony onto uh, Stevie Boy and Wolfgang. And thanks, like I say, thanks to BT Gunn, Chris Renfrew managed to retain the ICW title in what was a hard-fought match for Chris anyway. But thanks to BT, his right-hand man in the original New Age click. Uh, Chris managed to get the victory and retain the belt. What will happen next week on ICW's Friday Night Fight Club? We'll have to wait and see. But it should be interesting. And uh, as I'm doing this right now, Sunday, March 6th, which was yesterday, uh, hopefully we'll get to see Joe Henry one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Anderson. It should be interesting. Uh, all in all, though, guys, a very good double ICW show, just like ICW always deliver. 
as well. Right, that is the end of the ICW main points and review and that. And uh, I'll be right back right after this with a little quick little outro and a look forward to what's to come and what you should check out very, very soon. In fact, in a week's time. So uh, I'll be back right after this, so stay tuned. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Final part. Now, a few quick promotions before I leave you. Uh, like I say, guys, be sure to check out Mystery Island. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash The Mystery Island. And back to the island on Twitter as well. Uh, be sure to check them out. Like I say, Chris Masters is coming at the end of March to that area. So if you're in the Birkenhead area, get yourself down there. And uh, also, guys, tune in next week for another installment of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Episode 102, plus check out Max Wrestling's podcast, Max Wrestling Podcast involving Daz. Uh, Sunday, March 13th, I will be co-hosting it. So you need to check that out at some point. It's going to be on the Max Wrestling Podcast on Vimo, YouTube, and wherever else he does it, and his website as well, the Swerve Talk Network as well. So be sure to check that out as well. I'll leave a link in the description below on next week's episode. So you bet you have to check that out because it should be fun. And I got a little few tricks up my sleeve too, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening to this podcast, guys. Be sure to check out all the other promotions, all the other people as well. Sunday Segway, Max Wrestling Podcast, Offshoot Radio, OSW TV, uh, the Raging Falcon as well, the guy who does the Twitch stuff as well. All of them are partners. And until next time, guys, my name is Anthony Walker. And remember, no matter what, wrestling matters. Because sports entertainment does not. See you next time. Peace out. Well, enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes! That's 1314! I'm down this! Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line! Cause Stone Cold Simpson!